So is the Philips Hue Play system worth it for your desk setup? Well, the short answer is probably yes if you like working or playing in dim lighting and, and just kind of a darker environment, at least for part of your day. My name is Eric Wielander, welcome to my channel. Today, we're gonna to talk about the Philips Hue Play system and specifically their Play Light Bar, uh, which you can mount behind screens and just provides this more immersive experience. So as long as I can remember, I've always had a desk setup or some kind of a home office. And this, of course, is my latest where I work full-time remotely. And I've always, over the years, been experimenting with different things about my setup, trying to just take it to the next level. And this year, one of the things I've been playing with a lot is different forms of smart lighting to use around my desk and my home office. So Hue Play is a series of colored lights, and unlike the other colored lights that Philips Hue sells, these are able to sync up with your computer screen or your TV screen and provide some complementary, like bias lighting to whatever you're seeing on the screen. And this can happen through either a Hue Sync box, which is a $230 HDMI box, or with a computer, you can use their free app for Mac or PC to sync up your lights with your computer screen. Now, I sort of alluded to this already, but why would you want to get something like this? Well, making the contrast between the super bright screen and the dark environment around it just a little bit less can be easier in your eyes. And on top of that, when it, the, that light matches the colors that you're seeing on the screen, it can just make for a more immersive experience. Now, speaking of immersive experiences, if you're into this video, don't forget to smash the like button. It really does help other people find this video and the channel and help them share in this immersive experience. So setting up my Hue light bars, I initially got just one, uh, but I wasn't pleased with how bright it was. It wasn't very bright. It's only rated at 530 lumens per light. So I ended up getting a second light and then mounting them on either side of my monitor. Now you can mount these in a variety of different ways. Uh, Philips often shows them in their ads with sort of these freestanding mounts that come with the lights. They also come with a mount and adhesive pad to stick to the back of any kind of screen. And the lights are also angled on the back in a way that you can sort of set them up, point it at a wall or something to, to just work without a stand. And they plug directly into a power brick that can support up to three of these light bars at once. So we've talked about Hue Play lights, but the way that they coordinate with the screen is through Hue Sync. Of course, everything Hue does has to have some snazzy brand name. Uh, so Hue Sync is either the HDMI box that you can get uh, that then you run your HDMI cable through to your TV, or in this case, the app that you can install on your Mac or PC. Now, in order to get that all to work right, you first need to go into the Philips Hue app and create what's called an entertainment area, and then you specify their location in relation to the screen that they're attached to or related to, and where you would be viewing that content. Uh, this helps give Philips Hue some data about how to structure the lighting and the colors, of course, based on that environment. Once you have your entertainment area configured, then you can go ahead and add that to the Mac or PC app. Now, inside the app, there are four different modes you can configure your lights in. The first is scenes, and it's basically all of the static light scenes that you get with pretty much any Philips Hue product. These are great scenes, but they're not gonna do anything to sync up with what's going on on your screen. The next one is games. Now, these next three, games, music, and video, they all synchronize with what's on your screen and or what's coming through sound on your computer. And Philips has four different levels that you can pair these with. So subtle, moderate, high, and intense. And this relates to both the range of color that the play lights will put out and also the speed at which the adjust. So if you're doing something like a game where you might have quick cutscenes between different, uh, you know, like a bright area and a dark area, or maybe an action movie, you might want the intense version because it's going to make those adjustments sort of brighter and quicker and, and just uh, more intense. But if you're just working with this as sort of a backdrop, then you probably want to go with either the subtle or moderate. Personally, I like the moderate and it's the default option. 
Now, one of the cool things about the game setting specifically is that you can go deeper into the Hue app settings and configure specific settings for given apps on your computer. Now, they call them games, but it really works with any app. So you can specify an app, and when that app becomes the foreground app or is open, then the Hue Sync will adjust your settings automatically to match what you want for that particular app. So if there's a game that you really want the intense lighting on or something, you could go ahead and set it up there so that it automatically switches to that setting when you have that game open. Next on our list is the music mode. Now this will not show any light out of the Hue Plays if there's no audio playing on your computer. So uh, once you start playing music or other audio, then it will react to that. You can set a color palette that it uses to express lighting in relation to the music. And that can either be a preset color palette or a custom color palette. Now, I find this mode very distracting. I tried even just sort of sit, sitting back and listening to music I enjoy. I'm watching the lights change and seeing if that was any kind of entertainment for me, but not really. I mean, it's not like, you know, the old days of the iTunes visualizer, if you remember that uh, from old days of Mac OS, but it's, it's nothing like that. But, you know, it's a cool idea that Hugh's doing, and I'm sure there are some people out there who like it, but it's really just not for me. For that matter, I don't use the audio syncing for any of these, so I'm not having it listen to audio from my system uh, to influence the lighting on any of these options, I always have that off. And that is the default option. Now, next on our list is the video mode, and this seems pretty similar to the game mode, except for it doesn't have any of those custom app configurations. I kind of guess that Philips included this so that maybe you want a specific light setting for video, maybe uh, let's say moderate, so it's not doing as crazy of adjustments of lighting so that you can focus on the video, or maybe you do want to be syncing it with the audio for video. So there's an additional setting specifically for video, um, and, you know, I was wondering if maybe Philips was using like a slower refresh rate, given that a lot of times video is at a lower frame rate than a lot of other stuff you do in software or especially than gaming. But I, but I didn't see anything to prove that one way or another. Another key thing to note here is that you change between these settings manually. So other than the automatic app switching uh, changes that I talked about here earlier, these modes are, are things you have to switch between manually. So that's using the Hue Sync app, but I often talk a lot here on this channel about HomeKit. So what is it like to use the Hue Play lights with HomeKit. Now Philips Hue already added support for adaptive lighting to their lights, including these play bars. Now if you're not familiar, adaptive lighting is a relatively new feature within HomeKit and it allows your lights to dynamically change their tint from sort of a cooler hue to a warmer hue over the course of the day. That way as you get towards the evening, you have warmer light which is supposed to help you sleep better. Adaptive lighting in of itself is probably a topic for a whole other video but in short you can configure these lights to use that and you can also just configure them like any other colored lights in HomeKit. Now I tried using these play lights as well as the light strip I have below my desk and uh, the lamp over here with adaptive lighting. This is using the Nanoleaf Essentials line for the light bulb and the uh, light strip here and you know I just didn't really like looking straight into lights that were especially very cool colored in the mornings. Uh, it's you know I I just don't think it's what adaptive lighting is designed for. Uh, so I tend to prefer those sort of accent lights in my office to be a color that's not adaptive lighting related. Now, if you wanna use your lights with both the Hue Sync app and HomeKit, you totally can. It's not like you need to like uninstall the Hue Sync app or remove your lights from HomeKit in order to get the other one to work. If Sync is active, that will override any commands coming from HomeKit. So whatever the Sync app is telling the lights to do, that's what's going to win. Now, if the Sync is not active, any commands that HomeKit uh, ask the lights to do, those will go through as normal. So I'm going to talk about some advantages of these lights, some downsides or disadvantages, and then my conclusion of whether I'd recommend these lights for you. So I really did find in using these that it's easier on my eyes, particularly 
when I have more dimly lit scenes. Now, I like to, during the day when I'm working for my job, I like to have all the lights in here very bright. It just helps me feel like I'm at work, but if I'm in here at night after work, I like to have a dimmer light setting with more of these accent lights on. It just feels more fun and you know makes it feel like I'm not still at work, uh, unless, of course, I am working at night for work, and that's, that's a different story. During the day, when I have a lot of bright lighting on in my office, I really don't notice a huge advantage that the play lights are giving for me to look at my monitor. But of course, in the evening and other times when it's more dimly lit, I totally notice that difference more. And that's where I really say that if you like using your computer and set up with more accent lights around, these are great accent lights. And maybe these are your, your first or only accent lights to sort of create a dimly lit scene within your desk setup room. And uh, you know these lights could be a great way to do that because not only are they adding those accent lights, but they're making it easier for you to look at your computer screen in that kind of a lighting setup. Now, some of the downsides, I had issues when I go to sleep my Mac to get the lights to turn off with it. It didn't seem to always, so I'd have to turn off the light sync and then sleep the Mac which is definitely an annoyance. Another detail is that the brightness of the Hue lights is controlled separately from the brightness of your monitor. Now the Hue Sync app does have settings for you to assign hotkeys to brightness, so you can easily adjust it straight from your keyboard without drilling into the app. However, it is a separate process than adjusting the brightness on your monitor. And speaking of the app, it's generally a terrible Mac OS citizen. It does seem kind of like shovelware or something that's not really native to Mac OS. And uh, you know, like if you're playing a YouTube video full screen, good luck trying to go up to the menu bar and adjust any settings with Hue Play. You might as well just unfull screen the video, go adjust your settings, and then go back to it. So at least in my experience, you know, it, it doesn't seem to be the best as far as managing Windows how you would expect a Mac app to do so. So I've been testing the Hue Play on a maxed out M1 Mac Mini with Apple Silicon, and it pretty consistently uses about 40% of the CPU according to iStat menus when I'm running it in sync mode. Of course, if you run it in the scenes mode or you have the lights controlled by HomeKit, you're not gonna see any hit to your CPU on your Mac. Now, that said, my M1 Mac handled it like a champ. I never heard the fan turn on. I never felt like my Mac was slowing down with this added load. And the last important part here is that currently the Hue app is an Intel only binary running in sort of a translated Rosetta mode. Now, my MacBook Pro has been out for a pair for a while, so I haven't had a way to test this on an Intel Mac. Either way, of course, the Hue Sync is gonna use system resources because it's looking at every frame of your screen and trying to match the color to the lights. So it's a somewhat intensive task. So no matter how you slice it, no matter how much power you have in your system, it's gonna take some resources to get that job done. Uh, and, and so just keep that in mind, if, as this is running with Sync Active, you're gonna be draining some system resources to make this whole operation happen. Now, the last downside is that in my experience and what I've heard from more film creator focused YouTubers out there, a lot of Philips Hue lights seem to create banding when being filmed, especially when they're compressed in video, uh, meaning you'll see stripes across the, the light color as it's getting, you know, going from, from brighter to, to dimmer, you'll see these, these bands in the light. And, you know, it doesn't really look good on video. So that's actually why in this video, I don't have the Hue Play lights on and don't plan to use them in my YouTube video. So if you're a video creator out there, just want to use these somehow as a backdrop for online video, probably not the best lights for that. So in conclusion, these Hue Play lights are a little on the pricey side at about $130 for a pair of them, but they are just beautiful little pieces of hardware. I feel like you can mount them different places and they're this size and shape of light that you don't find very often. So if you're looking for just the right accent light, whether it's behind a TV or monitor or maybe somewhere else in your home, uh, check these out. It might work out for what you're looking for. And you know, there are some cool added features you're getting for that price 
with having the connection to your Mac or PC with the Hue Sync app. Of course, being able to down the road, sync it up with a Hue Sync box if you decide to buy one of those. But I would say don't plan on running that app on your Mac or PC all the time. Just maybe use it when it works out and you, you really take advantage of it. Now, if you're interested in getting one of these lights, there's a link down in the description. It is an affiliate link which might uh, support the channel at no additional cost to you. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. It really does help the channel and help other people find this video. Subscribe for more smart home and smart home office videos like this one in the future. Thanks again so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.